Hi, I'm Miss Joanne from the Lucy Robbins Wells Library, and I'm here to talk to you about a book. But before I do, I want to ask, do you have a talent? Believe it or not, we all do. Some of us figure out our talents when we're much younger, and others discover what their talents are as they get older. Well, in the book, Music for Tigers, by Michelle Cotter Roosman, Louisa, known as Lou in the story, has a talent to play the violin. She is so good at playing the violin that she wants to try out for the youth orchestra where she lives in Canada. But her mother wants her to go to Australia and visit her uncle, her mother's brother, in the Tasmanian rainforest on a small island right off the coast of Australia. Now, she goes because she has to, but she goes and she's very resentful. She wanted to spend the whole summer learning about and practicing her violin to the best of her ability. She takes her violin with her thinking she's gonna practice in Australia, but things change when she gets there. She meets the most unique animals, some really cool, others not so much, like a great big spider in her room. And she meets Colin, a boy whose, friend, whose mom is friends with her uncle. Now she doesn't think she'll ever be friends with Colin because they have nothing in common. But as she gets to know Colin and starts to learn about the Tasmanian rainforest and the animals, she starts to really like it there. And she finds out that there's a tiger, a Tasmanian tiger that is said to be extinct, or is it? As you read the book, you'll find out what Lou, Louisa, Colin, her uncle and Colin's mom do for the animals, what they do to try to save the Tasmanian tiger that is left on the island and what Louisa's violin music does. You'll also find out about Louisa's great grandmother and her journal and how all these things are connected. Read to find out how Louisa adjusts in Australia, how her friendship with Colin grows and how they work together to save the tiger. I'm here to tell you about the book, Be Fearless, Dream Like a Kid by Michaela Ulmer. Now, Michaela Ulmer wrote this book herself about her, her love for bees and the business she grew Now, Michaela didn't always love bees. Oh, no, no, no. She got stung by a bee and three weeks later got stung again and decided she was never gonna leave her home. And her parents told her that was not an option. She had to leave the house. So they took her to the library. They took out books about bees and she learned why bees sting. She also learned that bees are very important to our ecosystem and to our food chain. And she also learned that bees are endangered. And without the bees, food will not grow because they, the bees are our main pollinators. And if you read her book, she'll explain all that. She'll explain why and how she got stung by a bee She'll explain how she learned about bees and how important bees are. And she'll also tell you how she decided to raise money for the bees. But she does it in such a great way. I couldn't put the book down. Now, she started a lemonade stand and she raised some money to donate to the conservation of bees. And she realized that was just not enough. She wanted to do more. So she grew her lemonade stand and she did a couple of them and she entered contests. And before you knew it, she was opening up a business, a bottling company where she bottled up 
her own lemonade. And she puts them in glass jars, not plastic, because plastic's bad for the environment. And you could find these Me and the Bees lemonade in stores throughout the United States. Well, if you read her book, Be Fearless, Dream Like a Kid, she will give you step-by-step -step how to open up your own business. And even if you're not interested in opening up your own business, it's fun to read it, to see how she did it and how she started her own business to support the bees. And it's been 10 years. She's 15 years old now. She has a large company selling lemonade and she still sends money to support the bees and bee conservation. And it's all in her, it's all in her book that if you read it, I truly know you will enjoy it. Hello, it's Rebecca. And I'm here to tell you today about Pie in the Sky by Remy Lai. So, Pie in the Sky is an illustrated novel. It's got part graphic novel, little comics and illustrations, and also still some long pages with text. And this book will make you laugh out loud and it'll pull at your heartstrings. So in this book, Jingwen, his younger brother Yang Hao, and their mama have immigrated to Australia. Jingwen is struggling with the transition. He is still learning to speak English and compares to being in Australia to being on Mars. Just imagine for a minute that you move somewhere and you don't speak the same language, but you have to go to school and do homework and make friends, but everybody else is speaking a language you hardly understand. You might feel like you are on another planet too. So Jing Wing and his family are still grieving the loss of his papa who died unexpectedly. The original plan was for all four of them to move to Australia and open a cake shop that made fancy cakes and to call the cake shop Pie in the Sky. Back in their home country, Jing Wing's parents and his grandparents had a cake shop, but the cakes they made were simple cakes for people who couldn't afford fancy cakes. It was something the kids at school had teased Jing Wen about, and he was embarrassed by his family's simple cake making business. To deal with his grief and his regret, Jing Wen decides that baking all the cakes planned for the pie in the sky cake shop will somehow ease his struggles. Mama thinks that baking cakes while she is at work is too dangerous and for forbids the brothers from using the oven. Jing Wen is determined to reach his goal and makes rules for Yang Hao to follow to avoid getting caught. Unfortunately, Yang Hao isn't so good at following rules. I like books that make me feel something and this book did that for me. I empathized with Jing Wen's difficulty learning English. I felt the sadness of his grief and regret, but I also laughed out loud at some of Yang Hao's antics and their sibling relationship. I have two brothers, so I know what that can be like. So if you want a book that'll make you feel something, give Pie in the Sky a try. Have you read New Kid by Jerry Craft? It's the Nutmeg nominee graphic novel. I hope you have, because today I'm actually gonna talk to you about the companion novel, Class Act, also by Jerry Craft. So Class Act takes place all at Riverdale Academy, which is a school in New York City. And this book focuses on Drew, Jordan's best friend. Jordan was the focus of New Kid, and Drew will be the focus of Class Act. Um, it's second form or eighth grade at Riverdale Academy Day School, or RAD as they call it throughout the book, and Drew was hoping it would be better. Jordan and Drew both attend RAD on scholarship. RAD is a fancy private school that is very expensive to attend and not very diverse. In other words, lots of white kids, not many black and brown kids. Drew is struggling to find his place at RAD and to understand the conflicting messages he gets at school and from society in general. Why is it that he has to work twice as hard to go half as far 
when his classmates seem to have it so easy. And Rad is trying to improve diversity and inclusion, but sometimes they just don't quite get it. After a sleepover at Liam's mansion, Drew is questioning whether he can be friends with someone with so much privilege. Will Jordan be able to bridge the gap between his two friends? With insights from Jordan's cartoons and awesome artwork from the creator Jerry Craft, there is a lot to learn from the characters in Class Act. And I hope you'll read it, and I hope you like it as much as I did. Thanks! Hello everyone, my name is Miss Sarah. I'm from the Lucy Robbins Wells Library and I'm gonna to talk to you guys about one of my recommendations for fifth and sixth grade readers. And that is the graphic novel, Donut the Destroyer by Sarah Grawley. So this is an awesome graphic novel series that follows our main character, Donut. So her first name is Donut, her middle name is The, and her last name is Destroyer. And in Donut's world, everybody is born with a special superpower. So it could be anything. So you can have the power of visibility, you can fly, and you can shoot laser beams out of your eyes. In Donut's case, she's super strong. And with those powers, everyone has one choice to make. They either have to use their powers for good or for evil. And with the last name of Destroyer, I think you can probably guess what Donut's family has chosen over the years. They've typically all been villains, with one exception, one of her uncles decided to be an accountant. But Donut doesn't want to be an accountant or a villain. She wants to be a hero, the very first hero in the Destroyer family. But it's not going to be easy to convince her parents that this is the right choice. Or her best friend Ivy, for that matter. Her and Ivy have been together forever, and Ivy was pretty convinced that her and Donut were going to enroll in the villain school together and become a dynamic duo, causing all kinds of chaos and mischief. But now Donut's saying she wants to be a hero? Mm -mm, that's not going to fly with Ivy. She's pretty determined she can stop Donut and prove that she does not fit in with the heroes. So that's not great for Donut. But Donut's not so easily swayed. After all, she got accepted into Lionheart School of Heroes, one of the best school for heroes around, and that has to mean something. So she's gonna go to this new hero school and she'll prove to everyone, no matter what, that she can be a hero. But starting off at this new school, things already aren't going so great. All the kids at the hero school aren't so quick to accept a destroyer in their ranks and believe that she can actually be a hero. Is that gonna stop Donut? No way. Despite her last name, Donut is determined. She can prove to everyone that she has what it takes to be a hero. The next book I want to talk about is called Who, written by Kayla Noel. So this is actually her very first book, and it follows the story of a young girl named Ku, who isn't quite like most girls, so she doesn't have a traditional family. Ku was actually raised by pigeons. So when she was a baby, she was abandoned, and these pigeons found her, and they decided to bring her back to the rooftop to save her. And since then, they basically raised her as one of their own. So Ku kind of thinks, well, she's a pigeon too then, right? She's never talked to another human before, and she only knows how to speak the pigeon's language. But the rooftop really is the only world she's ever known, and Ku can't really figure out why she's so different from her pigeon family. She can't figure out why she doesn't have feathers or why she can't fly. But then one day, a hawk comes, and this is pretty much Ku's big job here. So she can scare the hawks away, but this time she wasn't successful. And one of the pigeons, named Burr, ends up getting hurt by the hawk. And now all the pigeons are starting to ignore him. So basically with the pigeons, if one of them gets hurt, they kind of just turn their eyes. They don't look anymore. They don't care about the weak. So if you get hurt, they kind of push you out. But Ku can't do that. She's not really a pigeon after all, she's a human. So when she sees someone get hurt, she wants to take care of them and she wants to help. And Burr has been her family forever. Well, if one of the other pigeons tells her that there is a woman sometimes that's come to the alley below the rooftop who likes to feed the pigeons. And in the past, she's taken the sick and injured birds away from the roof and then later brought them back all healed up. Well, that's just it then. Ku has to go find this woman. But if she wants to go find this woman, well, then that means she has to leave the rooftop for the very first time. But if she doesn't, well, then Burr might not make it. So Ku takes a deep breath. She gets really brave and she decides to leave the roof where she ends up meeting this woman whose name is Tully. And Tully, well, when you see a child that's lived on a roof their whole life, can't quite ignore the situation Ku is in, much less 
leave her behind. So she starts to try and take Ku with her. But Ku's pretty reluctant at first. She doesn't really want to leave. She doesn't trust Tolly. She doesn't even know how to speak like a human. But eventually, Tolly is able to convince Ku to come with her. And our story is basically Ku and Tolly and learning how to be a human and what that actually means. So it's a really fantastic tale about Ku's life and her adventures with Tolly, as well as her pigeon family. So I definitely recommend. This is a very unique story and it's very heartwarming. And you learn a lot more about pigeons than you probably ever thought you would know. And you've come to appreciate them much more by the end of the story. So I definitely, definitely recommend you check out Ku. Hi, I'm Miss Bailey, and I wanted to share uh, Unplugged by Gordon Corman. Uh, Gordon Corman is a very popular author. I'm sure some of you might have already read his books, and this is his latest book at the library. The main character is Jet, who happens to be the son of a billionaire tech um, guy, kind of like Steve Jobs from Apple. And he also, Jet, happens to be a big brat. Um, he's used to always getting what he wants. So in the beginning of the book, he's shocked when his father's private jet leaves him at a place called the Oasis. Turns out, not a resort. <laughs> Jet has gotten into trouble so many times um, that his father has sent him to the Oasis and he has to spend six weeks there. Uh, it turns out to be a wellness center where kids are forced to unplug, and that means no devices or technology. Uh, Jet is horrified. So misery loves company, right? Uh, Jet wants everyone to kind of feel as lousy as he does. He doesn't want to make any friends, and he doesn't want to follow the rules until he ends up rescuing uh, the lizard, or the lizard gets rescued, and it kind of forces him to start interacting with some of the other kids that are there. So once he starts to do that, he realizes the adults are acting kind of funny. So he turns his attention and his brains, because he is a smart kid, um, to kind of take a look at what's going on, and he finds that things aren't quite adding up. He then realizes that the Oasis may not be the sanctuary that it claims to be. So this novel is a mystery full of uh, humor, plot twists, and fun. I hope you enjoy it. Hi, I'm Miss Bailey, and I wanted to share the graphic novel Katie the Cat Sitter by Colleen Venable with you. Uh, the main character is Katie, and she is pretty sure she's going to have the worst summer ever. Her best friend, Bethany, is going away to summer camp, and Katie can't go. Um, she'll be home stuck in New York City. So Katie decides to take matters into her own hand and try to earn some money doing different odd jobs around her apartment complex so that maybe she can uh, buy one week of summer camp and that way spend some time with Bethany. And it kind of doesn't go very well for her. She kind of fails at being able to help her neighbors bring in their groceries, water their plants. Um, she, she's just about ready to give up on her plan when Miss Lang, a woman in her complex, hires her to watch her cats for $30 an hour, which is dream job level status for Katie. And so of course she agrees, and then she shows up and she realizes Miss Lang has 217 cats. And they're not ordinary cats. They uh, watch TV, they use the computer, they knit, they um, watch scary movies, they tell ghost stories, they do martial arts, um, they love to order pizza, trash the apartment. So Katie kind of has her hands full and it's nothing she can't handle but she's also aware this is not normal. So once she starts to kind of look a little bit more closely at Ms. Lang, she realizes uh, Ms. Lang is a little bit mysterious. And why does Ms. Lang keep secretly going out at night? One night, Ms. Lang doesn't return, and Katie and the cats have to go find her. So um, maybe then Katie will find out who Ms. Lang really is. This graphic novel is full of humor, uh, some mystery, superheroes, adventure, and of course, cats. I hope you enjoy it. Hi, Mrs. Mendelssohn here. I'm going to do some cool reads for winter. And this first book that I'm going to tell you about 
is called Cleo Porter and the Body Electric. It's by Jake Burt. Those of you who've been reading The Nutmegs, Jake Burt wrote uh, Greetings from Witness Protection. If anybody's read that and you're a big fan of Jake Burt, this is a great book. And it's very, very uh, contemporary and apropos to what's going on now, although when, he, when the author was writing this book, uh, COVID wasn't even a thought in his mind. Uh, Cleo Porter is 12 years old. She's never, ever been outside her hermetically sealed apartment building. Nobody's been outside. Uh, there was a deadly flu virus that almost wiped out the entire human race. So they came up with this idea to build these buildings. Everybody's sealed inside and everything is brought to them by drones inside tubes. So their food, their clothing, their medicines, um, everything is made in other buildings or farmed by drones outside and everything is delivered into their tubes um, by drones. So Cleo is actually training to be a medical doctor like her mother. Um, and yes, at 12 years old, that's kind of odd, but when you're inside and doing, not doing much else other than learning, and that's all that they've ever known, uh, she's training early. So one day she gets, um, there's a delivery that comes to them, and it's addressed, it's to their apartment, but it's addressed to a woman named Miriam. She opens it up and it's these uh, very important, vital, life-saving medications that if the person doesn't have them, they could die. So Cleo is trying to figure out how to get these meds and because everybody's saying, oh no, that, that doesn't happen, things don't get misdelivered. Um, so Cleo decides she has to figure out how to get these meds to Miriam so she, uh, to, uh, so she won't die. Um, but nobody leaves their apartments because it's dangerous outside. So what will Cleo do? Well, Cleo makes a decision. She's aided by two non-human accomplished, uh, accomplices and she goes off on her adventure and as I said before this was written before our current pandemic and um, the author did add in some edits especially towards the end uh, based on what's been going on now okay so that's Cleo Porter this one is Squirm and it's by Carl Hyacin one of my favorite authors he's also written Hoot and Flush amongst other books. Um, Carl Hyacin is a Florida resident. He's very uh, nature environmentally oriented, so most of his books will reflect that. Uh, the main character here is Billy, and he and his mom live in Florida. They do move around a lot. Uh, Mom's main goals are basically watching uh, bald eagle nests, so they live where there's a nest, and then when the eagles move on, then it's time for them to move on. Uh, Billy's father left him left the family when he was very young um, and Billy is a different sort of character you know he doesn't really have much fears uh, he's the type who will stand up to bullies again he's very nature oriented he likes snakes he once put a snake a rattlesnake in his locker with the mouth tape shut uh, to keep people from going in and stealing his stuff he earned the uh, nickname of snake boy but he's also used these snakes to help um, uh, keep the bullies away as well um, always curious about his father. He, one day he finds a letter that came in the mail and he realizes that his father is alive and living in Montana. So he buys a plane ticket and flies to Montana and finds um, his father's new family. And he has an adventure there because out in Montana there's a lot of wilderness and that's right up Billy's Alley there. So he goes with his stepsister. They go off to explore the wilderness and to try and find their father. And uh, Dad is actually keeping a secret. And it involves grizzly bears, it involves drones, and a dead parrot. Right? If you want to know what happens in the story, come and uh, get the book Squirm.